Madison doesn't only turn out songwriters and actors. Soon we will hear from one of Madison's greatest scientists, a leading thinker, innovator, and global technology, Dr. Richard Kitlin. After receiving his doctorate at Columbia, he spent 32 years at Bell Labs, retiring as a senior vice president. That's really a feat at Bell. They've got so many smart people. Uh, he joined the faculty of Columbia, participated in some Silicon Valley startups, but really the theme for Dr. Gitlin is that he's created inventions that have revolutionized global communications for computers and smart smartphones. In fact, when you turn on your sm smartphone or when you p open your computer, Richard Gitlin has had something to do with it. And I checked that with him before and he said, that's true. Most notable is his co-invention of the DSL, which is the Digital Subscriber Line, which allowed internet access over telephone networks. He's got a million awards, filled a couple of pages, and believe it or not, he holds 65 patents and published more than 150 papers. Uh, he wasn't finished either when he decided was on the retirement side. He's now working in Florida, uh, trying to merge electronics or communications with medicine. So stay tuned, somewhere, somehow, you're gonna hear his name again. Dr. Richard Gitlin. <laughs> Good afternoon. Can you hear me in the back? Yeah. I'm deeply honored to receive this award and congratulations to my fellow honorees. Uh, I'm especially delighted to celebrate today with so many of family and friends. Thank you for coming. So you've heard about my life after Madison in my five and a half minutes. I'm gonna describe how I spent um, my time growing up in Brooklyn a wide-eyed young student, actually a young boy, how my life was shaped by growing up in Brooklyn and by attending Madison. I was a curious kid interested in math, science, and yes, medicine. And of course, the Brooklyn Dodgers. After I realized that I was not going to be the next shortstop, as my friend Norman kept pointing out to me, <laughs> that was hard to accept. And I started thinking about my career. There were several significant influences beyond my family that drew me to science and technology and inspired me to identify, experiment, and solve problems. One was the TV show, Mr. Wizard, with Don Herbert. He used experiments to demonstrate the science and engineering behind everyday things that we all experience. The audience was encouraged to follow along with their own experiments. Now this was a problem for me because we lived in a small apartment. My lab was the kitchen table. And those of you who knew my mother would realize this was not her cup of tea. So I compromised. I learned to do many of the experiments in my head. So-called Gedunken experiments that have been used by many people a technique that I still use to this day. I still had no real idea of what career path to take and I was leaning towards surgery, strongly influenced by my uncle Mike, who was a surgeon, had an office on Eastern Parkway and practiced at Unity Hospital. So, so he said to me, Rich, you know, you read my books, you play with the instruments, let's go see an actual surgery. I was about 10. That was a big mistake. <laughs> it was an open appendectomy. What I remember was the Niagara Falls of blood. Shortly after that, are you okay? Are you okay? I said, Uncle Mike, I think I'll become an engineer. <laughs> so now my career choices were narrowed. I'm not gonna be a shortstop for the Dodgers, I'm not gonna be a surgeon. I arrived at Madison focused on learning as much as I could, especially in what is referred today as STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. Another one of my favorite activities in the library here, which I don't recognize what it was when I was there, was reading Martin Gardner's Mathematical Games column in Scientific American. 
and waiting anxiously for the next issue to see how my solutions stacked up. After a while, it became clear to me that the key to solving these problems was not tedious calculations, but thinking and thinking until the out-of-the-box, simple, elegant solution revealed itself. An invaluable life's lesson learned in my early years at Madison that I draw upon continuously. It's worth noting that both Don Herbert and Martin Gardner were honored by the National Science Foundation as stimulating many people like me to take up careers in science. Now to Madison. An extremely impactful, positive experience in Madison was the calculus class taught by Dr. Fite. As I recall, offering calculus in high school was a reaction to Russia's launch of Sputnik in 1957. We were the first class to take calculus. Dr. Fite made it, you know, we, a lot of us were terrified taking calculus. And he made it very easy. And this gave me a lot of confidence in becoming a technologist. It enabled me when I was a freshman in college to take physics with calculus, which allowed you to really get a much better understanding of uh, physics. Another math teacher, Mr. Edwards, was getting his doctorate in education at Columbia. And he offered a bunch of us the opportunity to come up and work with him on a big computer to do some statistical analysis of his data. So at this time, I learned a lot about this early IBM computer, which filled a room like a classroom. But of course, it was less, it's less powerful watching your cell phone today, or even in your new washer dryer and the processor. So, but I was very curious, and I did a little programming, and I wrote a program where I was going to divide, it eventually divided a quantity by zero. So I wanted to see how smart this machine was, would it recognize that this was going to happen. Nope, it didn't. The red lights went on, it flashed, and Mr. Edward said, who's the wise guy? <laughs> I confessed, and I said, well, I was just doing an experiment to see how smart this machine was. Madison certainly prepared me very well for my immersion in the technology hothouses where I spent my career. City College, Columbia University, Bell Labs, Silicon Valley, and now at USF, which can be a literal hothouse at times especially in the summer. Thanks so much to the Madison Wall Committee for honoring me and creating this wonderful day, and to my family and friends from near and far for being here today and throughout the years. I will remember this day always. One of my, um, I'm taking a little liberty here talking about philosophy. I've always felt work hard, play hard, dream big. Remember, if you shoot for the moon and miss, you'll still be among the stars. <laughs> Finally, I would not have arrived here today at this moment and had the life and career that I've had if it wasn't for the continuous support and understanding of my loving family, especially my dear wife, Barbara, who's been my partner, cheerleader, advisor on our journey through life, our dear children, Rachel and David, who are here, our son-in-law, Josh, and our grandchildren, Gabrielle and Isaac, who are home in California, and my family and friends who are here who supported me throughout my career and my life. Thank you very much.